Welcome back guys. I finally had the time to keep working on the boat. In the last episode I built the first seat here and this time I'm going to build the second one on the other side. Just like on the first seat I started with the framing and you might notice there is quite some space available. That's why I decided to add a little countertop space with some storage underneath. All right, so I went through this a little bit faster than usual and I also made some cushions off camera because I kind of covered all of this in the last video. However, there are still a couple interesting details left, starting with the timbre door. This up here is all of my cedar lumber and most of it comes from an old sauna. So I went through the pile and grabbed a couple nice quarter inch thick panel boards and started by ripping them in 5 eighths of an inch wide strips on the table saw. I also rounded over the edges with a router and sanded all of them before I put on three coats of water-based polyurethane. Next I lined them all up nicely and made sure everything is square before I applied wood glue with a foam roller. I tried a brush in the past but I couldn't get it on fast enough so the glue started to dry. This way I'm much faster. For the backing I used a chunk of painter's drop cloth fabric and once I had it in position I used a hot iron to smoothen everything out. Now be aware though that because of the heat this will accelerate the drying process of the glue like crazy so in a matter of a minute it will be already set. Next I trimmed off all the overhanging fabric with a utility knife and then I had to make sure that I cleaned up all the excess glue that squeezed out between the strips. 
If you don't do that, they won't be able to move freely around the radius in the track because it almost would harden to a solid sheet. I left a little opening at the tracks on both sides so I can feed in the door. And to finish this part I threw on a simple handle that I found in a second hand store and blocked the opening with a screw to keep the door in its tracks. If you watched the video on how I built this tabletop then you know that it actually can fold down and now that both seats are done I can start to work on some brackets. Somehow I need to hold the table in position and the first thing that comes into mind is to just screw on a triangular piece just like that and call it a day. I'm afraid though each time I slide on a seat I will get hung up on the damn thing so I will have to think about something else. The solution was just as simple. I used a standard 3.5 inch door hinge that I also got from a thrift store. I just had to slightly modify it to make it work and look better. The temper door is done, the brackets for the table are done, but there was one more thing that I wanted to deal with. A couple of years ago I took an old camping trailer apart. It was from the 70s and pretty rotten, but there were a couple cool items in there that I really wanted to use in this boat. One of them is this old water hand pump. I know you can buy pumps that are battery powered, but I actually prefer not to be dependent on a battery and I just love everything that works with simple mechanics. It was kind of baked in dirt, so I had to spend my time cleaning every single part. The plan is to place two 5 gallon water jugs under the counter, that way I would still have clean drinking water if I ever would decide to use filtered lake water for the main tank which feeds the shower and the kitchen sink. The timber door covers the entire surface under the countertop when it is in an open position, so the only way to feed a hose to was at the edge right through the framing. Being so close to the edge though comes with a different problem. The main pump body is supposed to be under the countertop and there is simply no space for that. To solve this I placed the pump on one of those multi-purpose containers. I made an entire video recently on how to make them if you're curious. To raise the pump and the container even further I cut a chunk of pipe and two chunks of an old shower curtain rod. The total height allows me now to feed the hose towards the edge in an angle which is hidden in the big pipe while the screws are hidden in the smaller pipes. I will show you a couple nice shots in a second, but first let me thank you guys for all of your support. This is such a tiny channel in the world of YouTube, which makes every subscriber and every comment even more special. And 99% of the comments are actually really positive and some of you have great suggestions. For example, recently uh, Ray Watson, he suggested to use um, Scotchgard waterproofing for all my cotton polstery covers. I didn't even know this stuff exists. And since I never have used this before, I did a test piece first. On the left we have a scrap piece with Scotchgard waterproofing and on the right we have a piece without. I put coffee and some fruit juice on it and let it sit for a couple minutes before I try to wipe it off. And look at the difference, the stuff is definitely working. I went ahead and sprayed all of my policy with this stuff, so my thanks to you Mr. Watson. Alright, it's time to wrap this up. Keep the suggestions in the comments coming and I will see you on the next one.